Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle by Pulverizing Pancake, no less. And this is called Illithid, and I didn't have a clue what an Illithid was, so I used good old Wikipedia just now to tell me. An Illithid is something from Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and it is a, uh, they're monstrously, monstrous humanoid aberrations with psionic powers, also known as mind flayers, apparently. And they're well known for making thralls out of intelligent creatures and feasting on their brains. <laughs> they sound particularly pleasant. And I guess this is telling us that this puzzle might flay our minds, which sounds a bit daunting. The tester said it's a brilliant puzzle. They didn't tell me how difficult it was, though. So I guess you'll probably have a better idea than me if you look at the length of this video. And if it's sort of three hours long, you'll know it's very, very hard. Um, anyway, speaking of very, very hard puzzles, many of you have been asking me about Fistimafel's new puzzle, which is this one here. And this puzzle is called Lighthouse. Uh, and if I just scan that over there, you can probably see it's got five stars out of five for difficulty and a 100% rating. And uh, I am quite scared of this puzzle, I have to say, not least because Fistimafel himself wrote to me to say that I should not solve it in a video because it's too difficult to be solved in a video and it may take too long. And he writes things in the introduction like, the logic behind this puzzle still feels a bit alien to me. And this is the mighty Fistimafel. Um, so look, there is an example there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not sure what to do with this. Uh, I mentioned it to Mark. Mark said I should live stream it, which I think sounds like a ludicrous idea. But I think Mark's thinking was that if I got stuck, then perhaps sort of the, the hive mind would be able to to help crack it. So that's that's one thought we had. Um, but we, we did have an email from somebody who solved it, who said it took them three or four hours to solve it. So it's going to be an absolute beast. Um, yeah, and anyway, it's given me the fear. Uh, so I don't know what to do with this. Uh, I know many of you are asking me to solve it, and I'm happy to try. Um, but perhaps perhaps a live stream makes more sense. Anyway, drop us a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you want to see. Um, but do be kind about those comments, please. Um, now, anything else to mention? Uh, not much else, I don't think. Well, just, oh, two things. Uh, firstly, very well done. If you've downloaded the PDF of our book, the physical copies are on their way to you. But if you've downloaded our copy, I know many of you have been attempting the Indiana Jones puzzle hunt in there. And I need to say very well done to Brendan Blackwell. Who, who who finished the hunt yesterday. So I think four people so far, or uh, maybe five people, but two of them were working together, have managed to complete that hunt so far. That's brilliant solving. And if you, if you did support us on Kickstarter and you can't wait for the physical copy of the book, and I wouldn't blame you, you can download this right now. Just log into your Kickstarter account and it will be there available. Um, other than that, you've got one more day. Uh, if you're a patron of the channel on Patreon, you've got one more day to get um, to get your solution over for the uh, Japanese sum Sudoku puzzle hunt that we published there. So do try and get that to us. Uh, if you want to be eligible for a prize, that needs to reach us uh, by the end of tomorrow. Well, that's actually a good idea. What I should do is get Mark to do the example puzzle from Fistum of Hell for our patrons. I might do that. Um, yeah, that's quite a good idea, isn't it? Right, Mark, I've got, you've got a job to do now. If I have to try and solve the real thing, you can try and solve this thing. Um, so, yeah, keep, keep an eye out on Patreon for Fistima Fell's uh, example puzzle. And Mark, Mark will take you through it. Anyway, let's get on with uh, Pulverizing Pancakes Illithid. And I'll read you the rules, which I think are just normal killer Sudoku rules today. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage if given. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we can work out the value of this cage or the value it would have if it did have a little clue in its top corner, because that looks to me like a nine cell cage. And given the last rule, which says digits cannot repeat within a cage, we know something about this cage. If it's got nine cells and there are nine digits in a Sudoku, this must contain all nine digits. And the secret is that all nine digits of a Sudoku add up to 45. So this could have had a clue in that corner, but it doesn't. 
do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, so we've got one mighty cage there apart from this one. Oh well, okay, so we can use the secret a little bit on box seven. These three cells must add up to 20 because altogether the box adds to 45 because it contains all the digits one to nine and 45 less 25 is 20. So those three cells sum to 20. Um, not seeing much else at the moment. The five and the 12 aligning in row one are a bit interesting. Yeah, okay, this square here is a one or a two. How do we get that? Well, we just use arithmetic again. So what's the minimum value I can make those five cells add up to? Well, if I put one, two, three, four, and five into them, they would add up to 15. So this cell here, if we add the cages together, we get 17. So this square here must be a one or a two uh, in order to ensure that the sort of maths of both cages work. Um, yes, okay, and now, right. So maybe what we've got to do is to note that this five cage here must have a one or a two in it. And a 12 cage must always have a one and a two in it. Yeah, okay, here we go. So whatever, whichever digit of one or two is in this five cage, because it's either going to be one, four or two, three, must appear in the 12 cage and must appear in this cell. So actually I'm going to color those. Um, because there is a repeated digit between it. Whatever's in there is definitely in there. Ah, oh, right. And I've just noticed I've got a symmetrical uh, arrangement of 12s and 5s in this column. So do we know some... Oh, yeah, okay, right, I've got it. I've got a few things here. This is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Let us ex let me explain what's going on. So this five cage must have a one or a two in it. I'm going to make this five cage blue for reasons that I will explain in a moment. The one or the two in this five cage must live in the 12 cage because the 12 cage always has a one and a two in it. And if you aren't convinced by that, well, let's think about the ways of making 12 in four cells. It either has to be one, two, three, six, or one, two, four, five. There is no way of avoiding. If you try and use one, but not two, one plus three plus four plus five is 13. So this is this is why this is the case. Um, now, whatever this is must appear here in this square, therefore by Sudoku. But now look, now look, what would happen if they were the same digit? Let's make them both one. Now we know this is a nine cell region and contains all of the digits from one to nine once each. And now you couldn't have a one in it. And similarly, if we try and make them the same, but they're two, you've got identical problems. So we don't want identical problems when we solve Sudoku. We want, we want resolvable slight problems. So these are different, which is why I've colored them differently. Now, if they're different, yes, okay, so that actually means these 12 cages have different composition, don't they? I'm just, let me just check that that's right. So if this was two, three, then you couldn't put a three in this 12 cage. So this would be one, two, four, five. But if this was two, three as well, yes, you get repeated twos. So these are different variations of the 12 cages. One of these is one, two, three, six. One of them is one, two, four, five. Um, okay. So what do we do with that? We've got more 12 cages in the grids over there and there. So perhaps we can Can we do anything with that? I'm not sure. I sort of feel like purple is not there. So purple is in one of those four cells in the nine cell cage and blue is in one of those four cells in the nine cell cage. 
which I mean that feels like that might be important so that means that <laughs> I don't know what it means <laughs> I'm just trying to fill the space <laughs> fill the silence while my brain catches up and my brain failed to catch up so I don't think I've got anything to tell you about the nature of purple and blue um, I want there to be a relationship between these 12 cages. These 12 cages have to both have one and two in them. So, what does that mean? Uh, ah, right, okay. Let's come back to what we looked at at the start. We said those three cells had to add to 20. I'm going to highlight those actually. These three cells here had to add up to 20 because of the mathematics of box 7. Well, whatever the purple 1 or 2 is, there's definitely a 1 or a 2 in the purple cage. It will find a friend in this 12 cage, which means the purple 1 or 2, which has to appear somewhere in column 3, has to appear in one of those three cells. And that's rather well, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Because you can't put it in green. If you make this square a 2, these two squares would have to add up to 18 and be double 9. That will not work. So this is the only place for the purple 1 or 2 in column 3. And that logic is symmetrical, look, with the blues. The blue 1 or 2 has to live in there, therefore has to be in one of those three, so that has to be here. This is very clever. So now, now blue... The blue one or two must exist in this 12 cage in that domino. Yes, yes, okay. We know one of these three squares is a blue one or two. In fact, it's not that one. Oh, right, yeah. In fact, I'm going to revisit this 12 cage. I'm bouncing around all over the place here. Apologies. But I'm spotting things in strange orders, perhaps. But look, I've got a one, two here and a one, two here. Now I know that there is a blue one or two because the 12 cage contains a one and a two. The digit that is in the five cage, the low digit in the five cage must appear in one of those three cells. Well, it's not here by Sudoku and it's not here by Sudoku because in the nine cage, this one or two has to be in one of those four cells. So it's exactly there. Now this is important now coming back to the logic over here because this square cannot be the blue one or two. That means there's a blue one or two in the 10 cage, which means that 10 cage is not three, seven or four, six anymore. Right, now, now I'm going to, now I'm wondering whether what we do now is highlight the high digit in the 10 cage, because you can't put an eight or a nine in a 12 cage. So let's go, let's bounce back into box four and note that this high digit here is in that domino, which goes through the medium of the nine cell cage into one of those four cells. Oh, and that means that, so that means in box eight, Neither of those digits is orange, and you can't put orange in a 12 cage. So orange is in one of three positions. Wow, okay. Well, let's keep going with this now, because now, whatever the high digit is in the 10 cage <laughs> is not in green anymore. Because orange is in that domino and that triomino, both of which point at green. So this means that this, this sort of virtual 20 cage does not contain either an 8 or a 9. So this cannot be a 3, 8, 9 combination. You can't put 3 in green, because if you do, you need an 8 and a 9 to accompany it, and that breaks the logic we've worked out with the 10 cage. So now 3 must be in one of those three cells. Yes, got it. This is so beautiful. This is just, none of this is very difficult individually, but the way it knits together, it is, 
it's like you know you're dancing with the divine it's just so beautifully set up now i'm going to come back to this 12 cage again because now if i've got a three in this two by two oh my phone's going nuts hang on a sec let me just check that's not an urgent message no it's not um um right i want to go back and look at these threes because what would happen if there's a three in this 12 cage well by sudoku then where would we put the three in column three it wouldn't be in those cells it wouldn't be in these cells and it couldn't be in the 10 cage it would have to be here well it can't be there because we know that those squares there have to add up to well a very small number they've either they're either adding up to 15 or 16 because if they if these add up to 17 then this square would be a zero now if these are adding up to 15 or 16 in fact probably it would have been worth doing this uh, once i noticed it but you've got to have a three in there because this is either going to be if it's 15 it's one two three four five if it's 16 it's one two three four six so there's a there's definitely the digits one two three and four in that string of digits so this square is not a three which means there is no three in that 12 cage and that 12 cage has now become a one two four five quadruple Ah, uh, right now i'm going to use that again by noting this square cannot be a four because of the logic we've just done here so where do i put four in this column well it's not there and it's not here so it must be there because it's not there and now in my t virtual 20 cage i've got a four which means that's four seven and nine that's not a four because the four is vertical so that means these squares are now three five six and eight to complete the box oh beautiful yeah, right and now i'm going to bounce back up here again by noting there's a five there and a five in here so the five in this column has to go at the top and that is beautiful because that means these cells are not a one two three four five quintuple they must therefore be a one two three four six quintuple and we can't put six in a five cage and that means there is a six over here once there's a six in a 12 cage you know the six you know the 12 cage is one two three six so it doesn't have a four in it which means the four in that quintuple must be in the five cage so that's one four we've now got purple purple is one. Oh, yes right and the logic i did to make this square oh that square's blue so that's two now but anyway that, that this is eliding over the fact that i have to put one in this 12 cage well it's going to have to be here by sudoku now because it's not there and it's not there and it's not equal to blue so this square is a one that's purple we can remove ones from these squares we can place two in this digit the five cage is now a two three five cage and we can carry on that's a two well sorry that's a two that's a one due to the logic we've already worked out that is no longer a purple digit um okay that there and those cells are no longer two look just by sudoku and we can say what else can we say we maybe we can do we know there's a three in here and a three in here so there's a three yes this is lovely oh and surprising actually so there's a three in one of those three cells which means this 12 cage has not got a three in it so that 12 cage is one two four five as well as this one i thought for some reason these would be different but they don't appear to be unless i've made a mistake which is possible um hmm okay oh i know what this being a one fixes my 10 cage now so my 10 cage has got a two and an eight in it so that means what oh this is gorgeous as well look there's an eight in this domino well it's not in the 13 cage or that would be a five and clash so there we go we've got an eight here and no eights down there we've got eight now is vertical in this column 
So 8 is not in this domino at the bottom. 8 is in one of those three cells. Which sort of feels like it might matter, but I'm not sure how to make it matter. We've got 7s, 8s and 9s to complete row 1. Um, those squares are not 2. Do we know that? Yes, we must know the nature of this 12 cage. It's not got a 3 in it. So that's a 1, 2, 4, 5, 12 cage like these two. Okay, so what about this 17 cage maybe now? Because I've got a quintuple there on 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So the minimum these two squares could be would be 6 and 7 which is already 13. So this square has to be four or less and cannot be two. So this is one, three or four. Um, again, I sort of feel like there might be a way of limiting that more, but I can't see how to do it. So, all right, let's take stock. Let's try and work out where we are with the puzzle. Have we have we done enough to feel confident we can? Oh, I tell you what, this 13 cage can't have a 4 in it, can it? Because there's a 4 in there and a 4 in there. And it can't have, it can't be 5, 8, because this can't be 5 or 8. So this is a 6, 7 combination. Which means those squares are not 6. Whoops, not 6. Let's pick the right digit to eliminate. Um... Don't know if we know the order of that either. What about... What about... I'm not sure where to look, I have to say. There are some cages I haven't looked at very much, so it's probably going to be one of those. Is it this 15 cage? There's got to be... Oh, I tell you something. In this column, I've not put a 6 in it. So the 6 is in one of those three cells, and that is really important because that means that square has got to be a 7. So now those squares that are still we've still got to place in box 1 are 3, 7, and 9. Right, that's important as well because now I've got a 3, 7, 9 triple in column two so there's no three down here so this is a five six pair so this is a three eight pair and i've got a one four five pair and this seven is fixing that cell okay so there we go three seven here means this square's become a nine so i've now got four seven left to place in this one and i know what ah uh, yeah i do and i know what these three digits are now they must be three six and nine So, oh, okay, that can't be a 9, because then this domino would have to add up to 6. Well, the only way of doing that would be a 4 here and a 2 here, but that's going to clash. So this square is a 3 or a 6, this square is a 4 or a 7, so this square is restricted, but maybe not. If that's a 6 and a 7, it doesn't work. You'd have to put 2 here. 6 and 4 also doesn't work, so this square is a 3. Um, and these add up to 12, and that can't be 7, 5, because the 5 is in there. So this is 4, this is 8. Therefore, this is 7. <laughs> and we're still going here. We are still competing to finish Illithid and have our minds, I don't know, are our minds getting unflayed, or are we flaying other people's minds by completing this? I'm not sure. That square's not a 3 now, actually. So that's been reduced to 1 or 4. looks like it's sort of heading towards some sort of quadruply type thing. We, the five in this triple is definitely in this domino, so there's no fives over there. So this is, oh, I see, the two is in this domino. Okay, that might not be terribly helpful. Can we do anything more? Nine? Nine in box eight can't go in the 12 cage or in those squares, so it must be in this domino which means nine must be horizontal in those cells, but that's, that's totally useless. Uh, those squares aren't three. Um, right, 
Where do we look next? That is the challenge. This 9 cage can't be a 3, 6, 9 cage or a 1, 8, 9 cage. So this is either a 2, 7 or a 4, 5. I'm going to put the options in for that just in case it... Don't think it does... Don't think it does anything. Not sure. Um, I can't sit. Yeah, uh, no, in fact, <laughs> I thought I, I was suddenly thinking if that was 2 7, there's a 2 here, and then there would have to be a 2 there, but there is already a 2 there, so that was completely. Uh, was I was about to say something that was complete nonsense. Okay. So, where shall we look next? The one in box nine has to be in this domino. And that's because the one in box eight is in this domino. Um, but that again, I feel like, yeah, I feel like we're, we're miss I'm missing the point of the next step of the puzzle. Somebody like Pulverizing Pancake, they design their puzzles so that there's a very natural flow. And when you feel like you're sort of floating around with bitty logic, it's unlikely you're finding the logic that they've hidden in the puzzle correctly. Um, so what's it going to be? How are we going to get unstuck here? Normally, at this point, I would say do some Sudoku, Simon, because that's almost certainly what you haven't done. Um, But I can't immediately see how to do that. I have to say, maybe it's one of the cages that I've not looked at yet. Which would have to be maybe this four. I don't really want to look at that 14 cage. That doesn't look terribly promising. If that's a three, these have to add up to 11. If it's not a three, it could be a, couldn't be a five could be a six, these would have to add up to eight. It'd have to be a one seven pair, that looks possible. And that doesn't feel, that doesn't feel right to me. Um, okay, is it this 12 cage? That doesn't seem, again, that just doesn't seem to be restricted. Or is it the 17 cage? Hmm. I mean, if that was a 1, this would be a 7-9. We would know the order. This would be an 8. This would be a 6. But if that's a 4, this would have to be a 6-7 pair. And this would be an this would be an 8 or a 9. Again, I don't feel like that's quite right, is it? So, where is it that we're missing the trick? Seven and eight have to be vertical. Oh, that's it. I oh, know. Or is it? I'm just thinking, where does seven go in box in this box? It's not here. It can't be. It could be there, couldn't it? But it can't be. Yes, that's it. Right. Seven. Where does seven go in the nine cage? Well, it's vertical which means seven is not in that particular cell and not in this particular cell by Sudoku. So if it's not in this domino, it's horizontal, and this is a three, seven domino, and there we go. That gets us a six here, which means that these two squares add up to 11, so this is not a one. That's a four, that's a seven. So we can remove four from these cells. Now this 12 cage is not four, eight or five, seven. So that's three, nine out of nowhere. That's lovely. That gets me a six here and a nine here. This four is giving me a five here and a four here. So that's not four, therefore this is not five. But we've basically done almost all of the digits. So this is an eight or a nine. That's an eight by Sudoku because the nine's in that domino. So that's become a nine. That's become a seven, that's become an eight. Seven here means that this is now a, a five, four cage, and we know the order. It must be five here, four here. Okay, so now we're starting to cook with gas, aren't we? This is better. 
Now these two squares have got to include a 1 and a 6, which rather annoyingly doesn't seem to be resolved. That does fix where the 1 goes in box 9 though, we can do that. And this being a 1 or a 6 is probably very important. I can't immediately. Also, it's quite interesting to note that in this row, we've not placed 8s or 9s in any of the pencil marks, and you can't put 8 and 9 in the 14 cage. So this square has got to be an 8 or a 9, and there's a 9 in the cage already, so that square, believe it or not, is an 8. Which we could have done, I've just seen, by the power of Sudoku. There are four 8s looking at the central box. Whoops! Okay, but now there's a 9 in this 14 cage for sure. And that's beautiful because this can no longer be a 7. So that's 3. That's 7. And now this square is obviously known. That's got to be a 5. That places 5 in box 3. We can now use maths to tell us the value of this digit because we know the cage or the whole box adds to 45. And we've got 11 plus, we've got 17 there plus a 19 cage. Uh, that's 36. So this is a 9 by maths in order to make sure the box adds to 45. Now that's a 9. That's a 3. Uh, this box now has got to contain 4, 7 and 8. So the 4 must go here, the 7 must go here, the 8 must go here, the 8 goes here, the 3, the 3, the 2. Come on, let's keep this going. Um, these two squares are obviously 6 and 9. So the 9 must go here, 6 must go here, 6 and the 5 go in. Now we can tidy up this bottom box and the 5 here is still being useful. So 5 and 2 go in. 6 here means that's a 3, that's a 6. Now we've done this column apart from the 3. This is a 7-8 pair. Now we might be about to finish this puzzle, I think. Um, we just need 2, 6 and 9. So this is a 6 by Sudoku. This is a 2-9 pair, and the 9 down here is now useful. 9, 2, 2, 8, 8, 7, 7, 3. This column needs, what, 4 and 5, which we can do. 5 and 4 go into the grid. And now in the, in the funny 9 cage in the middle, we just have to place 1, 3, 1, 3 and 6. Okay. So we can probably do some tidying up. Yeah, now the only place three can go is here. And how is this not finished? Oh, it's going to be this 14 cage, isn't it? Yeah, OK, let's look at this. So we need this domino to add up to 11. And it's not 3, 8. It's not 4, 7. It's not 5, 6. So this is a 2, 9 combination. Um, which means that's a 1, that's a 6, that's a 1, that's a 5. These two squares here have got to be a 2-4 pair, which we can do. That finishes the 4-1 at the top. This square's a 6. That's a 4, 4, that's a 1, that's a 1, and that's a 7. And we put a 7 in the middle, and we click tick, and that's how to solve Elithid. We got our minds flayed, but I think we, we stitched them back together before the Elithid completely decimated us. Um, it's a beautiful puzzle, isn't it? And actually, not quite as difficult as I feared it might be from the title. Um, but the logic, the logic especially around the, the sort of the break-in parts is so beautiful. The way there's this relationship between this 12 and this 5 cage and the way it, those cages impact with this cage here, forcing these to be different versions of fives and twelves. And then we were able to basically, yeah, it was funny, this region here became very powerful, even though I sort of didn't think it was going to be. It was a, twen it was a virtual 20 cage, and we were able to use that. Yeah, we got the one and the two here, and then we were able to deduce the makeup of that 12 cage, which felt like a real breakthrough. Yeah, by just using the logic there. Yes, that was it. There was a three in here, wasn't there? Once there was a three in there, we worked out there couldn't be a three in there. And that was that was huge. It's just beautiful. 
beautiful as usual. Well done, Pulverizing Pancake. Another super puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great weekend. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>